Hello everyone. In the last lesson we learned how dependency injection containers work and implemented a very basic DI container following the PSR11. So we have a working DI container but there are of course many features that are missing from this container that you would need in a real application like caching, singleton support, optional parameters, interface support and so on. In this lesson we're going to implement the interface support because what if you wanted to inject an interface as a dependency and not a concrete implementation. So if we go to invoice service class here we are injecting concrete implementations here but what if we wanted to do something like payment gateway service interface. So I'm going to create this interface and put it within the app services namespace because for this example the structure does not really matter but in real application you would probably put this within a contract or interfaces directory or something like that but for this case it doesn't really matter. We're going to change that to interface and add a single method from the payment gateway service. So we're just going to copy this and put it here. And then we'll implement this interface within payment gateway service. So we'll do implements payment gateway service interface. Now let's open the browser and see if this actually works. I'm going to refresh the page here and of course we're going to get an exception where the exception message states that payment gateway service interface is not instantiable. And that makes perfect sense because we've added that check in the previous lesson when we wrote the container. If I open the container here and go down to the resolve method we have that check right here. So if the class is not instantiable we throw this exception. So to to fix this we need to bind the interface manually and tell our container what concrete class to resolve when interface dependency is requested. We can bind our classes within the app class because app class is kind of like our bootstrap class for this code. So we're going to open the app.php here and instead of creating a static property for the container we'll accept the container as a dependency through the constructor. So we'll do protected container container and then here we'll bind the the interface to an implementation. So we'll do this container set payment gateway service interface and we'll pass a closure here which gets container as an argument and we'll simply get the concrete implementation from the container. So we'll do container get payment gateway service class and this should be good enough. Let me format this code so it looks a little bit better and that's good enough. Now our code should work. So let's go to the browser and let's refresh the page and we're getting an exception that the first argument passed to the app class must be container but router was given. This is also expected because we are accepting this dependency here and we're not passing it when we're instantiating the app class within our public index.php. So if we go here this is where we're passing the router and we have the container instance here so we could just pass the container the same way and this should be good enough. Let's try it now. Let's refresh and sure enough everything is working. So we were able to inject interface as a dependency into our class and it gets resolved from the container to a concrete implementation based on what we have bound in our app class and this is our configuration right here. And you will see something similar to this in Laravel framework or other frameworks or other packages that have dependency injection containers where you have to do the little bit of setup. Let's make this a little bit better now. I want to be able to do something like this. I don't want to use any closures here. So instead of using closures I want to be able to do something like this and expect a container to still work. So what we're doing here is that we're binding this interface in the container to a concrete implementation payment gateway service and we're not passing any closures and this is not going to work currently because if we go into the set method we have type hinted it to callable so this would fail which means that we need to do a little bit of refactoring to make it work when a fully qualified class name is passed instead of the callable. Thanks to PHP 8 we can use union types and simply add string as another type here. And then when we're getting the class from the container we could refactor this section here to check if the entry is actually callable. So if entry is callable then simply do whatever we were doing before. Call the callable function and pass the container instance. Otherwise if it's not callable then we can assume that it's a fully qualified class name. Now it could also be an alias but we haven't implemented support for aliases and things like that. So we'll assume that it's a fully qualified class name. 
So at this point, we need to defer back to the reflection-based auto-wiring to have the container figure out how to resolve this class automatically. And this is where we're doing that right here. We're calling the resolve method on the ID. So we could either do something like return this resolve entry and have the container figure out how to resolve entry, or we could simply do ID equals entry and fall back to this line right here where the ID now becomes entry and we'll have the container resolve the class properly. And and either way works it doesn't really matter which way you would want to do it it's just this way you're avoiding repeating the this resolve multiple times now let's refresh the page and make sure that it still works let's open the browser here hit refresh and everything is still working we're not getting any errors let's go over this one more time and see why it works so let's start from the very beginning we are at the invoice service and we're injecting an interface as a dependency. At this point, the container is going to be responsible of resolving this from the container. So we'll open the container and the first thing it does, it checks if the binding exists in the entries. And in this case, it exists because we have bound it manually within our app.php right here. So here we're saying that payment gateway service interface is bound to a concrete implementation payment gateway service. So when we're asking the container to give us an instance of this interface, it needs to return an instance of payment gateway service. So if we go back to the container here, an entry here is simply fully qualified class name of payment gateway service because that's what it's bound to. And then it's not callable and therefore we don't do this part here and simply we'll fall back to this line where ID gets set to the fully qualified class name of payment gateway service class and not the interface. Then we simply fall back to the reflection based auto wiring and we try to resolve the payment gateway service using reflection. All right, now that we got the interface working and we know how it works, why would we want to use interfaces instead of concrete classes? What benefits do we gain by injecting an interface and not a concrete implementation? We're still binding the concrete implementation right here. So what's the real benefit of simply injecting interface here instead of a concrete implementation? To better demonstrate this, I'm going to rename the payment gateway service class with uh, something like Stripe payment. So we're going to open the project files here and I'm going to rename the service, not the interface. So I'm going to rename this to something like stripe payment and we'll replace this with stripe payment and we'll call the variable something like payment gateway and everything will still work so if we're gonna open the browser here and refresh the page everything is still working which is fine now after some time like six months or a year or maybe more the boss comes in and says that we need to switch to another payment gateway aggregator like paddle for example instead of stripe when we're injecting stripe payment here and if we did the same thing to all other classes that needed the payment gateway as a dependency we're kind of creating this tight coupling with the stripe payment gateway even even though we are using the dependency injection and we are loosely coupled as far as the dependencies goes, we still have this tight coupling to the specific payment gateway. So if in six months or later down the road we need to change to a different payment gateway, we would need to change a lot of the parts in the code. We would need to change this and replace to paddle payment and maybe the paddle payment would have different methods so we would have to refactor those as well. So it becomes harder to maintain and extend such code base. This is one of the problems that interfaces solve. So instead of having our invoice service depend on the Stripe payment or a specific payment gateway, we can make it depend on some sort of interface where this invoice service class does not care what the underlying payment gateway is. All it cares is that whatever it is that it's being passed to, it conforms to the interface or to the contract. So we would replace the Stripe payment with something like payment gateway interface. And we can rename this from payment gateway service interface to something like payment gateway interface. And we would define all the necessary methods in that contract. And then Stripe payment would implement that interface and provide the implementations for those methods. And then within our app class, we would bind the payment gateway interface with the Stripe payment. So now anywhere we need access to the payment gateway, we're not going to hard code to the specific payment gateway like Stripe. We're 
simply going to inject payment gateway interface as a dependency and our container will be able to resolve that to Stripe payment. Now if we go back to the browser and refresh the page, everything is still working. But in six months or a year when our boss comes in and tells us that we need to replace Stripe payment with the paddle payment, all we really need to do is simply create a new class here called paddle payment. So we'll implement the payment gateway interface and provide the implementations for the methods that are defined within the interface in this case charge. So we're going to return true here but I'm going to echo out some message here to indicate that we are within the paddle payment. Now all we need to do to make this work is simply replace and swap out the stripe payment with paddle payment and then we can open our browser and refresh the page and we see that everything is still working our code still works but now we are using paddle payment gateway and not the stripe payment gateway and all we really had to do was to create this paddle payment class implement the interface and provide the implementation for the defined methods within our contract and simply swap out the concrete implementation within our binding this is how service container works behind the scenes in Laravel as well as many other DI container implementations. And of course they have a lot more features than our simple DI container but in a nutshell they do pretty much the same thing. If we look at the service container example bindings in the Laravel's documentation we see the code that looks similar to what we wrote. Instead of the set method here there is a method called bind but as you can see it still does the same thing with of course a ton more features. So here's an exercise for you. Open up the Laravel's framework code and find the container implementation and read through the code. See if you can spot similarities with our implementation and of course Laravel's implementation is way more robust but you should be able to find some similarities. I'll leave the link in the description to the container implementation file from the github for Laravel so take a look and let me know in the comments if you found the similarities and what are the similarities. Here's another exercise for you if you're up for it. We haven't written any tests for our DI container class and writing tests is very important. If you've been following this series and have watched PHP unit lessons in the third section, you should be able to write basic unit tests for the container class. So why don't you write a few unit tests and send me the code so that I could review and I can provide some feedback. So this concludes the topic about dependency injection and DI containers. We have more fun topics to explore and talk about in the coming videos. I really appreciate all the support you've shown me. It really means the world to me. So thank you so much and I'll see you next time.